there are two things I love talking about on this channel if you've been around, and that is raising dairy sheep and greenhouse gardening. So today I'm gonna use a permaculture principle called stacking functions or closing the loop. And I'm so excited to be talking about different ways you can use wool in the garden or greenhouse. I'm Natalie Lucier from Weightkeeper Farm and Nerdery, and today I'll be talking about three different ways that we can use wool, which is a byproduct of raising sheep and could be even considered a waste product of sheep these days and using it to grow more fruits and vegetables. So this is how we close the loop on our farm. So we raise dairy sheep and we have to shear them once a year. If you don't have any dairy sheep, I'll be sharing some tips on how to find wool later. And of course you can turn wool into amazing things like yarn for knitting and felting and doing all of this amazing stuff. But I haven't quite gotten to that yet. And I do a lot of gardening. So I thought I would try these different techniques first. So first off, we have wool as mulch in your garden. And there are so many benefits to using wool as mulch. So let's get right into it. So the first thing is that wool is an excellent insulator, which means it will keep the soil warmer as well as the roots of your plants warmer. So it's great to use in a greenhouse like this where we're trying to keep the plants warmer during the winter. Because of that insulation ability, it's amazing both in the summer and in the winter. The other cool thing about wool is it can hold about 30% of its weight in water. So that means that when you're watering your garden, it will absorb a lot of that water and then it will also equalize. So if it's really dry, underneath, the water will get released down into the soil underneath, or if the air is very dry, then the water will be removed from the wool into the air to really help and improve that water quality around your plants. Now, this is really cool because it means you can water less in your garden. And like all mulch, if you apply enough wool around your plants, it can really provide a barrier against weed seeds germinating and growing next to your plants. So this is great if you don't like weeding too much and you really want to provide a good base of mulch around your plants that will prevent weed seeds from germinating. Another great benefit of using wool as mulch is that it slowly releases nitrogen and other trace minerals into the soil as it decomposes. So like a lot of other mulches like compost, for example, it is full of nutrients and can actually help feed the soil and the micronutrients in the wool will end up in your plants eventually as it continues to decompose. And like a lot of other organic mulches, you will see that the wool will decompose in about a year or two and then you'll be able to incorporate it into the soil soil as a soil amendment. And so you will probably need to replace your mulch after about two years or so. Now let's talk about wool as a slug control. So organic slug control can be a little bit tricky, especially if you have pets around or young kids and you don't want to use all kinds of chemicals. So this is why wool is so amazing. You can put it around any plants that tend to have slug issues. I've personally seen results with this very quickly. So I had a small cauliflower plant and there were a few slugs already on it. So I went ahead and I picked off those slugs I put some wool all around it and I have not seen any slugs go back to it. The reason this works so well is that it's a physical barrier or physical deterrent because slugs don't like to slide over the fibers of the wool and it really makes them not want to go in that direction. Finally, number three is using wool to bulk up your seed starting mix. I first learned about the concept of using wool pellets, which is essentially broken down wool, shredded wool that is added into a soil mix to start seeds in another video from a YouTuber called Regenerative Gardening. And I love this because in her video, she showed that she did a couple of tests with different types of soils and different types of mixes. And the one that had sheep wool pellets outdid all the others in terms of their growth. So I think this is such a cool thing and we've started doing it here too. Now I'm not buying any wool pellets because we have our own sheep. So what I'm doing is just using scissors to cut down some wool and especially the dirtiest bits because I know those can't be turned into yarn. And what that ends up doing is it creates extra fluff and extra bulk into the seed starting mix. Now another benefit of using wool like this is that it replaces peat moss in soil mixes and that's great because peat moss is not the most regenerative option on the market. Personally, I love being able to make my own seed starting mix using compost from the farm, as well as wool like this so that I can really close the loop on our farm and be able to start seeds without trying to buy a ton of stuff into the farm. Now, the idea here of using small chopped up pieces of wool in your seed starting mix really comes down to a lot of the same things that it does as mulch. So it does release a little bit of nitrogen and other minerals into the soil, which can help feed the plants and feed the microorganisms 
organisms in your soil mix and that is amazing for getting those plants off to a strong start. And it also retains a lot of water and helps to fluff up your soil mix. So that's amazing again because watering those seedlings can be a really important and tricky thing to do to keep them just the right temperature, just the right moisture. And so this can really go a long way to making your seed starting much smoother. So where do you get wool or wool pellets? So if you don't have your own sheep like we do, there are probably tons of local farms that have sheep that are trying to find a place to offload some of this wool. Sheep need to be sheared every single year. And back in the day, wool was so profitable that shearers would go farm to farm and not charge people anything to shear their sheep as long as they got to keep the wool. But things have really changed in the past couple of decades where people just can't sell wool anymore. There are no people who are willing to turn it into yarn and it's not as profitable as it used to be because it is so human time intensive. So it ends up more as a byproduct where people end up making things like wool pellets that they can then resell for real value. Unfortunately, no one wants to process wool anymore and it ends up staying in storage. So if you can find farmers or if you can find other people on a local marketplace that have wool that they're just trying to get rid of, this is a great way to find it. And you can also find wool pellets online. So I'll put the link for that below and you'll see more information about how it's produced. Usually it's just wool that is shredded and then pelletized by being smushed together to create small pellets that they can sell to different people. And then what you do with those wool pellets is a lot of the same thing that you would do with full wool. You just put it around your plants. It will have similar effects in terms of nitrogen release and also in terms of slug deterrent. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see how wool gets taken off sheep, go ahead and watch our time-lapse of shearing sheep here. <laughs> 